What goes into taking a memorable picture? I believe in patience and knowledge and skill and love. Got to be love. 88-year-old Roy DiCarava has been taking pictures professionally for 60 years, and he remembers the backstory for just about every picture. That's Lewis. You know, the reason why he's running, because he's going to a funeral of Fletcher Henderson, mm -hmm. the great jazz musician, orchestra leader. Many of the shots that fill his books, like the picture of a young girl amidst rubble on her graduation day, were the result of good fortune, but also plenty of anticipation. And I said, oh my God, when she gets there, I've got to pull the shutter because that's where the whole thing comes together. So I waited. A good photographer requires not only patience, but confidence that his patience is well-timed. DiCarava has primarily photographed the black experience in New York, like his beloved jazz musicians. I love this man. And of course, it's John Coltrane. What is it about the jazz musician that's appealing to a photographer? Their devotion. I used to photograph them because everything they did expressed what they were doing. They were uninhibited. And working people, like the tired man coming up from the subway at the end of another long day. What happened was a miracle. He was coming up the stairs, and I ran out of film. He was so tired, he stopped at the landing. And I was able to load the camera and take the picture. How's that? DiCarava's work has been shown in exhibits around the country. He was the first black photographer to win a Guggenheim Fellowship in 1952. But for much of his early career, he worked nine to five as a commercial artist and took pictures before and after work. In 1975, he started teaching at Hunter College, where he still teaches. There is some irony in that. I would never listen to a photographic teacher in my life, and yes. I never have. But yet your students should listen to you? Yes, Okay. because I'm their teacher. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so if you had you as a teacher, would you listen to that teacher? I think I would. Yeah. I really think I would, because I think I'm a pretty good teacher. Mm -hmm. And I think I like myself enough to say that. DiCarava says he wants to give his students the freedom to be inspired. In his own work, he's always been inspired by photographs in black and white, using only ambient light, moments preserved forever. I'm not doing anything else but listening and trying to capture, to give a physical form to some process that's going on in my mind and which the only evidence I can have of what's going through my mind is this physical presentation of the present moment. There were early signs growing up in Harlem that Roy DiCarava would make his living in pictures. I was a chalk drawer. I drew with chalk on the pavement. His goal was to become a painter. One problem. I was a lousy painter. <laughs> I was. Terrible pain. His mom wanted him to play the violin. She forced you to take violin lessons? Yeah, but she soon regretted it. Because? I practiced. <laughs> <laughs> DiCarava was raised by a loving single mother, but he says not having a father left a hole that was never filled. I was wounded. And I missed something that was very important to every child to have a family and be part of a family. He eventually enrolled at Cooper Union, at the time almost entirely white. He says he learned a lot and found the students encouraging, but he says the teachers ignored him. I was sort of a, a ghost figure there because I was the only one. He felt racism again during World War II when he was stationed down south right next to a German prisoner of war camp. Mm -hmm only to see the German POWs treated if better than the African-American soldiers. He came back to Harlem, started working as a photographer, and in 1952 became the first black photographer to win a Guggenheim Fellowship. White photographers called me and were angry with me because I won it. They said, you won, you won the Guggenheim? I mean, I could see the faces, you know, screwing up. And saying, but, but how could you win? The, you know, and it was literally like this. 
How, how could you win a Guggenheim? In the mid-50s, Di Carava befriended poet Langston Hughes, and the two produced a book about life in Harlem, The Sweet Flypaper of Life. And for two years, he had a gallery to showcase his work. But it would be years later before museums would exhibit his work in New York and other cities. Di Carava believes racism kept his work from being more accessible. It's always been a constant struggle to get my work before the public in a way that was respectable. And this idea about black photographers and, and racism, I don't want to dwell on that, but it dwells on me. His work has now been the subject of 15 solo exhibitions, including the Museum of Modern Art in 1996. And in 2006, he was awarded the National Medal of Arts. My days of bitterness are over because I have the sense enough to know that this is not good for me to be bitter. Di Carava and his wife Sherry have been married almost 40 years and they have three daughters. He also has children from a previous marriage. He's had some leg problems over the last year so he hasn't taken many pictures lately. But the feeling is still there, the eyes too. Because I still see pictures. I mean, I see pictures all the time. Jesus, you know, it's like uh, it rains. Uh, pictures are there everywhere. And that's the wonderful thing about photography is that it, it escapes these time zones. And you look at a photograph and it's now, it's not then. One-on-one -on -one with Roy DiCarava, Bud Mishkin, New York One.